Dave here. How are you? I've been watching a bit of the chat. It's cooling down in the Northern Hemisphere a little bit, except for someone in England thinking 27 degrees Celsius is hot. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> That's not hot. Okay. Uh, if you can let me know if the stream's running okay. I think it is. Everything's looking pretty good here. And I'll have a quick look down the bottom here and it should let me know. Yes, indeed it is. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to... Give me a second. I need to switch this over here so that it's not coming through and punching back towards me. Done. Done, done, done. Excellent. All right, what have we got on the show today? It's, uh, it's another busy day and, you know, last night I was thinking, what do I talk about? But I've always got... I can talk underwater, didn't you know? Okay, so we've got a new giveaway. This is... Part of it. This is one of the squares. These are Gros Engineer squares and they are super duper accurate. I keep one beside the router table and I also use it on the jointer to check that the fence is square. And it uh, is brilliant. Now it's a three pack and I will quickly show you what they are. Here we go. So that's the three pack. They are very, very, very nice. Very, very, very square. And I'll tell you how square they are. Their accuracy is to, uh, the squareness is to 0 0.00063 of an inch, 16 UM, 16 microns. Um, so that is half a thousandth of an inch accuracy over the length from there to there, which is very, very good. Okay. Um, Steve, glad you on time uh, was going to make you go in the corner. <laughs> Sorry about that, Steve. Darren Morning, Swedish Hand. Hi, Dave from San Diego. It's hot. Uh, DC 2062. That's an interesting dust collector. Interesting you should say that. We will be assembling my one horse dust extractor today. Well, I'll go as far as I can. It's going to be an unboxing and move into it and try and get the, the thing done. I need it for the CNC. I had a run with the CNC yesterday and I created my first project with it. And you could not, you could not get the smile off my face. It's amazing. All right. Uh, and have a look in the show more area down the bottom and you can have a look at all the people that helped me out. And CNC router parts are in there. And so is Vectric for Aspire, the software that runs it. And, uh, you know, I was, I was doubting whether I should get this thing. And uh, now I've got it. <laughs> Happy days. The, the, the bounds are limitless. It's just amazing. Anyway, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, the dust extractor I just talked about. Last week's winner of the Jessam Clear Cut Stock Guides. And I see that John Lowry has promised to stay to the end of the show if he wins. Even if I say the winner's name at the beginning of the show. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to wait a little bit further on. I might towards, you know, three-quarter time. How's that sound? Anyway, so I made him promise to stay if he wins. Uh, next thing we've got, Bob Macker's bench. Now, Bob had a friend who recently passed away, and Bob inherited the bench, and he's been restoring it and putting it together, and he is, you know, it's, it's such a, a nice thing. Every time he looks down at it, uh, he, he, he remembers his uh, friend who's passed on, and uh, he's done a really nice job of restoring it. So we'll have a quick look at that. And pocket hole screws tip. Uh, Derek Lark was saying to me, Dave, I need to be able to stop this little bit of slippage when I'm doing pocket screws. Right at the end, they just end up pulling a little bit tighter right at the end, maybe a millimeter. So I'll show you a quick tip on how to do that. It's nothing really new, but it might help. Um, oh, there's a comment there. There's a comment there regarding Oh, sorry, I should have even said good evening, good morning, afternoon, everyone from DC2062. Left him in the cold. Uh, Andrew, uh, hi from Toronto, Canada. Uh, DVWJR79, good evening. Barry Doxy is still there. The smile is fixed, of course. Of course. Alex, hello from Tasmania. Sue Big just bought a set of four gross squares. I'm really glad you feel they are accurate. They are, they are, they are. They are the most accurate square that I've got. And they're not expensive. You would think because they're a cheap set of squares that for what they are, that uh, you know, they're not going to be any good, but they are good. Uh, Dave M. Hello from Wisconsin. Uh, John Lowry. My bride just asked why I was laughing. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me, John, why were you laughing? Oh, because you promised to stay to the end of the show. All right. What's the next thing? 
Um, where were you? Derek Lark has sent a photo in of where he was watching the show from. This is something I'd like to do every week. So if you can find, get someone to just say, look, John, get your wife to take a photo if you're having a gig or watching the show. You know, and send it in to me, DaveStantonFans at gmail.com. That'd be great. Uh, images from AWISA. That's the Australian Wood Industry Suppliers Association. I've got a couple of photos here. I haven't got everything. But if you have a look at one of my last live streams, which was, you know, not the, the live stream of the week, but I took my mobile phone with me and I just turned it on and wandered around live. And I interviewed a guy from DMK. Now, these guys make different types of panels. And he, made, he showed me one that he was really impressed with, which is an acrylic of some sort. And it has real seaweed in, like layered in the center, like it's been laminated in there. And it looks amazing. So if you're thinking about a shower screen or an outside um, screen of some sort, or an inside screen, wouldn't really matter, have a look at them. They're amazing. Have a look through that video. It's the second one I did. There's one of me in front of a massive dust extractor, and there's another one. Uh, it's basically the design department. So some of it's a bit boring. I'm wandering around, and other parts you go. So have a look. Maybe skip through a bit till you find it. And uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, okay, a quick look at the Gros Engineer Square, which we've just had a quick look there. And Patreon, check out the rewards I'm offering, behind the scenes gossip. So if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes while I'm doing other things, things that I don't normally put on Facebook, uh, this is for a select few. Jump in, have a look on Patreon. You know, if you want to, you can support me. If you don't want to, that's fine. Have a look on there. Sometimes I throw some things up there for public anyway. All right. First thing, first thing, first thing. Let's have a look at Bob Macker's bench. I'm going to have a quick read through here. Hi, Ron. Hi, Dave. Hi, Barry. Thanks, Joe. Saying a very big impeller on that dust collector. It's a monster. A monster. Okay. Uh, what was that robot building? Zane wasn't building anything. It was just showing how it's one robotic arm grabbed one tiny little bit of, you know, something like this, a bit of 16 mil melamine, grabbed it, threw it down on a bench, ready for an assembly production of some sort. Amazing. And it's just picked things up, put them back. It was so, so accurate. You know, and I was standing beside a guy and he said, I wonder how many guys' jobs that bloody thing would take. And that's the sad part of it. It is a sad part of it. But we're progressing, aren't we? We're moving along. We've got, we used to have horses. Often when I jump in the car with Vicky or we've been out, we say, okay, the... Uh, the carriage is waiting down there, the horses are there, the footmen are there ready to, you know, get the horse going. We just jump in a car these days. How many people does a car replace? I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I'll tell you what, I like the fact that I can get in a car and go somewhere. Australia's a pretty big place. You know, to travel to work takes me an hour and a half sometimes. Uh, to go and do the shopping can take me up to, you know, well, half an hour if I get zapped down to Penrith. You know, so cars... I don't know whether things would be different. Look, this, this is a whole topic that we could jump into. Uh, just received my thingy jig scribing tool from Australia is the best I've seen. This is Adventures in Wood. Okay. You'll have to tell me more about that. Paul Mumford, good morning. Dave Mann, hello from Burlington, Ontario. Uh, morning, what did you miss? Nothing, just me waffling on. All right. Bob Macker's bench. Bob Macker's bench. Here we go. Give me a sec. Where are we? There it is. And I'm going to try and keep up with it. Again, I've written a little story. This is the story. You won't see that, but I can see it because I have. This is written in lemon ink, so you won't see it. <laughs> I'll read through it and uh, we'll see how we go. I'll switch over now. Okay. G'day, Dave. Here are photos of my old carpenter's bench. I've not finished the restoration and mods yet. Originally from Granville Tech and painted government green. I've left some on to show some history. Uh, you can see it in one of the shots. I built the drawers which are full width of the bench and open opposite sides of the bench with dummy drawer front on each side. The drawer fronts were made from an old cupboard. Um, I put Merbo around the bottom of each leg as they needed some reconstruction. The blue record is original fitment with one from the other side missing. I mounted two Dawn Australia vices and having two works a treat. The old stops were replaced with hardwood. Notice the giant wing nut underneath. Come on, come on, come on. You can, there it is. Uh, securing the stop donated by Ian Kerry and his source from an early Holden. 
That's a car from Australia. Hey, Dave, are you responsible for any of the saw cuts in the top of the bench? A uh, bit of a dilemma. Would like to restore the top, but want to maintain the bench's history. Hard one, what do people think? The bench has been shellacked on one side and one side apron replaced. My bench hook shooting board hangs on one and a Craig jig, jig on the other. Lifter wheels have been fitted for mobility and thus underneath the bench has been significantly strengthened. Uh, sorry, Dave, pretty long narrative. <laughs> Bob, I'll tell you what, I don't mind, Bob. That's great that you've shared that with us. And that's an old bench that he got, as I said, from a friend of his who recently died, and it, uh, it was originally from Granville Tech. Now, he said that because he knew that I was probably a similar age, and I went to Tech, but I didn't go to Granville. I went to another one, uh, you know, when I did my apprenticeship when I was a kid. Right, next thing, next thing, next thing. What have we got? I'll post it on our Facebook, Adventures in Wood. Good. Um, Andrew, I mean, the, the engineers to keep the robots going. Uh, so there are people employed. Yeah, it's a shifting scene, isn't it? You know, we're, we're educating our children to be ready for the next what's on the horizon. But who knows what's on the horizon? It's going a little bit faster than it used to. Well, that's what I say. But my mother also says that. She says it's scary how fast it's going. But lemon ink, I'll tell you what, it's... High strength lemon ink. As always, I only buy high strength lemon ink. I think it's 30%. Uh, 30% proof. Okay, <laughs> what's the next thing? Uh, the pocket hole thing. And now I have it set up here. So I haven't got to run around. And let's see if I can do this without destroying anything. i drag this one back to me. Ta-da, look at that. Now, I'm going to use, oh, that's too far for me to reach. I'm going to use the K4. And I'm going to hold it down with these guys. Now remember, I'll come up a little bit closer. See these guys? These things are fantastic. And this is the other part of it. Now, it's got a washer on it. I'm doing some blatant advertising here. Watch. Crack that. It's a camshell. And I can take out the inch and a half, 5 16th bolt. And how do I know it's a 5 16th bolt? Well, that would be a good indicator. And I can put a two inch, or I can put a two and a half inch, or a six inch, whatever size I want. Now I'm going to use the two and a half inch, or sorry, the two inch, because I found it gets the best grip. So I slide it in the end. See just here is a little lip, and there's a little lip on this side, just here. So I'm going to line those two lips up together, push it back like that, and it clicks shut. Put the washer back on. And now, this is the part where it's a drum roll. This guy here will slide straight into there. I will put the bolt up through there and a Craig bench clamp on there. And this is not my standard standard bench. This is another one that I knocked up. But it does just as nice a job. Now, it's taking a little while to screw it in because it's getting a good grip. I want to make sure there's as much thread in the receiver here as possible. So when I clamp it down like so, it's not going anywhere. Look at that. I love it. Okay, now we need this little guy because we're going to do that kind of joint just here. So I'm, I need it to be, it's five six. oh sorry, it's five eighth or 16 millimeter melamine that we're using. So five eighth. And I'm going to look around for five eighths, part B and part A. They're both five eighths. So, you know, it could be there, but I'm going to rotate it back to, yeah, you can see it better there, back to there. So five eighth, five eighth, part B, part A. And it tells me the screw for the job coming close is one inch. Okay. So if it's one inch, and it says 5 8 jig setting, 1 inch screw. So 5 8 jig setting. I slide this up. And on the side, mine's an old one. I actually hit these up with white paint. So if I go to there, you can see 5 8 is just there. All right. Now I'm going to slide this down. You can't see it. Not because I don't want you to see it, but I can. <laughs> Makes it easier for me to do the demonstration if I can actually see what's going on here. Okay, there's five eighths. 
Now I have to set the drill to be the right depth with this stop collar. Now, you guys all know what this is. That's the stop collar there. I drop the drill down into here and I'm looking for the 5 8 point. You know what, I'll show you because it's so easy to do it with that in there. So I'm coming back to here and you'll see just here 5 8. Now up the top here is where I put the stop collar in. So I will sit it there and I'm going to use the Allen key which, look at that, lives on board. And I shall undo the collar. Just back that off. Now I have to slide the drill back so that the bottom, the shoulder of the drill, see the, the shoulder there, not the point, the shoulder. I'm going to slide that back up until it gets to 5 8. This is a bit awkward doing it holding it in front of the camera. Okay, so you can see I've slid it up to there. Now I will tighten the collar. And that is the drill set to the correct depth. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit because obviously when I put it in the drill, it's, this is going to come down and hit on there. And you can see the, the jig stops it at the right depth. See that? And so the stop up here is hitting the top of the guide block. All right. I do use the Foreman all the time. If you have a look at the video that I show doing the draw fronts, MFT draw fronts, I think I call the video, something like that, you'll see that I use the Foreman big time. And I did all of the 16 mil with my Foreman and it's great, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now I'm gonna take that out and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna run this over the jointer. This looks a bit crappy on one side, so I want it to look nice. I'll switch cameras for a second. Back to camera two. Transition, there we go. Got the jointer down the back there. Now my jointer is very quiet. My dust extractor is a little bit noisier, but the jointer is very quiet. So I'll turn the dusty on with the TV remote. Ah, oh, look at this. Some lucky person has, is buying that off me. Um, because I'm going to use the CNC. Can you see me all right from there, guys? Okay. It's very quiet, but I will throw these on. Whoop. These are great. I've been using these and using them and using them and using them. Alrighty. Turn this guy on. How quiet is that? That's looking pretty good. Give it one more run. Lovely. Very nice. Turn off the dusty. And take the goggles off. Beautiful machine. All right, now I'm gonna dock this in half. So I'll switch the cameras again. There we go. I believe you use a form and Craig advised it was not designed for 16 millimine. Do you use it? Yes, I do, Alex. But I have the pneumatic. I've got the pneumatic model, buddy. I don't have the electric one. 16 mil is not a problem. Alrighty. I'll dock this. Beautiful. Grab a drill. And put this in there. And we need to put this in here so it's going to be able to load up. It has, it's got a stop, a, a little bolt there that we push. But I'm, I could tighten it up with the spanner and that would make it stay constant all the time. I'm not going to use the dust extraction at the moment. So I shall put a hole in here. One. And 
Move that out of the way so you can see what's going on. And another one there. Like so. Very nice. Take that out. And now I'm going to work over on this part here. So I'll turn the camera around slightly. Uh, where are we? About. Yeah, that should be fine. Alrighty. Um, I'll undo this one because actually I want you to see down the side. So I'll bring the camera over here a little further. That might work better and tip it down. Move this out of the way. And this is the part where I want everything to stay rock solid. So I put the piece that I'm going to be connecting on there. I'm going to move this along ever so slightly up to about there. And then put a piece of timber behind it. Now, this might seem extravagant. But once you... S and there, there are clamps that you can use. I'm locking it down to the bench on purpose. I don't need to lock it down onto the bench. It could be locked just to itself. So I shall put a clamp down through there. That is pretty solid. And another one. Down through there. Move that guy out of the way. Release that one a touch. Just a little. I want this to be absolutely spot on. Oh, that's too far. That's got it. That's got him. Done. Now, the screws. I think I can turn that up just a little. Um, maybe. No, you don't need to see the back of the screws. There's only a screw going in. Now, the jig said that little round wheel told me, let's see where we're up to. 5 eighths to 5 eighths is saying one inch screw. Now, don't get confused with the one inch screws. I always use the, what do they call it? A pan head screw from Craig. I don't use the, the micro screw, which has got a different head, unless I have the micro jig, which is a different size drill bit. It's smaller, it's designed to work with, and goes down to a three quarter. Now, I set I use my little CXS, and everyone knows this is my favorite drill in the world. I'm setting it to number four on the clutch. And either it's going to be good or too much, one or the other. Let's see what happens. Oh, magic. Look at that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's, there is no, nothing. It's just smooth as. It's very easy. There we go. See? That was easy. That was easy. So that was that demonstration all finished. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it was something, as I say, someone asked me about how to do something, so I thought, you know what, I'll just throw it on. And it gave me the opportunity to show a couple of things. I could show you this clamp, which is just beautiful. I love it. This saves my timber tops from being destroyed by the back. I'll move that out of the way. 
It saves the, the top from being destroyed by the back of the clamp. Now, Craig also make one, but it's not like this. It's got a pivot out the front here, and it kind of rocks around. It's only got a very small base at the back, and it doesn't... I can't see that it does much protection. It may, but I think this is great because it's a, it shares the load out very, very well. Okay, that's enough of that one, and I will check here. And should I do the... Um, should I let everyone know the winner yet? No. <laughs> All right, I've moved this back out of the way. Actually, I'll take it right off the table. Give me a second, guys. I want to make it ready so I can get the dust extractor up here and start assembling it as well. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Now, that's only if you really, really, really don't want that last little bit of creep. And you can also use a spacer like this. If you're doing a series of uh, shelves, you cut a spacer that's exactly the depth of the space you want between the shelves. Two of them. And then you can put them in between each other and then just screw. Now you have to work out visually where it's going to be working from. So if you're working, you want the screws underneath so no one can see them as they're looking down on the bookshelf. Like so I'm looking down onto the shelf here. I don't want to see the screws there. They've got to be underneath. So then I'd have to work from the bottom. I put the bottom one in first, and then I put the next one in, put the screws in, next one, and next one, so on and so forth. And then I turn it over when I got to a certain point, so that uh, if I if the bookshelves are very tall, then I'm not looking at the pocket hole. I'd have to work out what the optimum spacing is. But you could work that out for yourself as to which side you're going to put the screw on, on the top of the shelf or on the bottom of the shelf. It's fun. And of course, you can use plugs. Okay, nearly there. This is a bench that I knocked up that I've been using a bit and I took it down to Carbotech and I left it there for a little while and just showing people that it was created with the UJK path guide system that was sitting. There we go, so you can see it. So it made it easier. People could see it in the flesh rather than watching on the, on the show. All right. I think I'm just about there. And next thing we'll do is have a look at where people are watching from. How are the numbers going, guys? I can't see it at the moment because I shut that part down. I'll do a quick read first. Where are we up to? Uh, Clifford Cup, thanks. Okay, David M, say, let's get Barry a snack. What do you say? Well, Barry is losing weight at the moment on purpose, and he's starting to come good. He's on steroids and on antibiotics, and he's got another you know, week or so on antibiotics, and then steroids are going to be with him for the rest of his life. Um, I was quickly reading something from Carl there. Um, yeah, so he's on steroids, and uh, I forgot where I was at. Not to worry. Oh. On air light is no, it's turned off. What's the story there? There we go. It's on. Ha. Um, totally forgot it. Totally lost it. Not to worry. Let's go into where you're watching from, and we've got a picture from uh, Derek Lark here, and this is out at Bateman's Bay. He says, "Watching the show from the flat at Bateman's Bay." Next one. I know. I know it's not overly exciting, but it is interesting to see, you know, different parts of the world. And it uh, gives you a bit of an ownership in the show as well. Why not? Next thing is, I'm going to tick these off as we're going. Um, Bob Macker's bench, pocket hole screw tip. Where are you from? Images from AWISA. All right. This is one hell of a dust extractor. See that guy down the back there? Uh, that dust extractor, though, that pipe is around 18 inches diameter. See, so here people arguing between 4 inch and 6 inch. <laughs> Look at that monster. You could climb up inside that thing, I reckon. Um, and, and, oh, the other thing about Barry, yeah, he's, uh, because he's on steroids, he's drinking a lot. And because he's drinking a lot, he's got to get rid of it, obviously. So he's a bloody fountain. He walks around the house and he doesn't even know it. 
Oh, I'm wondering whether I've done the right thing to keep him alive. Might have been better to put him all on the ground. But, he, you know, we love him, so we wouldn't do that. Here's another picture from Oisa. This is an interesting thing to do with dust extractor pipe. They built a tree. Have you seen anything like that? And where are we up to next? We're going to start building this thing. Now, this is the one horse extractor that I've got from Carbotech and the cartridge filter. That's a pleated cartridge filter. Now, the reason I'm going to use that on top of the dust extractor instead of the uh, fiber filter, which is on the, on the machine showing that picture there, is there's about 50 square feet of surface area on that needle felt bag. That's what it's called, needle felt. And it, uh, it's, it's a five micron filter. Now the cartridge filter is closer to, that particular one's about 600 square feet because of all of the pleats. And it's a one micron filter. So do the maths and you find that it actually breathes better, even though it's only a one micron or down to a one micron, which, which is catching more. And it's got these handles on the top. So you rotate those like you just turn it. And it's got little rubber paddles inside that taps the inside of the filter. So it drops back down into the bag at the bottom. And it, uh, it makes for so much easier cleaning. Otherwise, with the other one that's on the machine, you have to turn it inside out, take it down the backyard, and uh, smash it like crazy against a tree. <laughs> Dust goes everywhere. Well, I much prefer this one. Oh, Zane, yeah. Um, yeah, I know you can get nappies for dogs, but, you know, it's... What do you do? He's... He's... It'd be embarrassing for him. And I, we had like his sister, Patty, had, she had nappies right at the end. And uh, it's a little bit easier for a girl dog than a boy dog to put a nappy on them. Anyway, uh, not to worry. Let's get into this next demonstration and it will be assembling this guy. Now, I don't know if I can do it right here or whether I've got to do it over there. I have a few things. I'll grab the box because everyone likes to see an unboxing. So it's not too big, not too heavy. Uh, slide her over that way so you can see it. All right, where are we? Knife this is the first thing. We'll open her up. I had a bit of a, um, someone saying to me on Facebook that they thought it was a little bit strange that uh, I was promoting Jessam uh, clear-cut stock guides uh, when I work part-time for these guys. And I said to him, you know, <laughs> no one owns this show. This is my show. I can promote whoever I want on the show. And, uh, you know, this week, Carbotech is getting a very good serve with what I'm doing because they gave me this machine. Obviously, it's going to get a lot of exposure when I you know, start doing all the CNC videos. So, why not? I give a bit of exposure. They supply some stuff for me. Makes the world go round. So I think that guy better get his facts straight before he starts giving me a hard time. Anyway, not to worry. What have we got? Inside the box. Inside the box. We've got the base plate to start. Now this is the plate that the whole thing gets mounted on. I will move this around a little bit this way. So you can see it a bit better. And we've got some things here. Now I won't be needing this. This supports the needle felt bag. So I'll leave that out. And we've got these two guys here. They support the impeller up the top. And there's the, the needle felt bag I was talking about. And also inside there is a plastic bag. And I might actually switch the cameras going everywhere and there's a gasket yeah I will switch the cameras around Oop. there's a handle down there I'll switch it over to the other one camera two transition there we go that might be a bit easier all right move this one out of the way over here now this probably won't finish today but it's one of those, I just haven't got time. I'm running out of time, big time, to get things done. That's the winner down there. Don't you look at that. 
<laughs> Wheels. Instruction book. Um, this is the post that holds the thing up. Clamps. And the motor and the housing. So there's, there's the housing. Okay, this is the actual separator. There we go, I'll do it the right way around. So that's the separator. It's got a little bit of a lip in the top here. So the air comes in, spins around, spins around in here. Uh, the heavy stuff falls, the air goes up to the top. If I wanted to, I could put a wok in here as well. Have you seen those things? It's basically a dish that's upside down. Jet have them. So it looks like a wok upside down that gets mounted under there. Something to think about. Right, and the rest of it is the motor and impeller. Let me see if I can get it off. Yep. There we go. And the box for recycling. Right, so that's everything there. You can see that. I'll bring it over so you can see it a bit better. Stuff everywhere, isn't there? All right. Now the first thing to do with this, put that over there, is to put the wheels on the bottom. Now there's a few different packets of screws. It's pretty obvious which ones are for the wheel, or for the base and for the wheels. And on some of them, I've, I've built a fair few of these things in my time. On some of them, I noticed that the screws were a little bit too long in this packet. Now, there's different screws in here. So make sure that you only use the short ones. Can you see there's different length screws in there? So only use the short ones to put the wheels on. If you put any long ones in there, the casters won't rotate underneath and the thing will drive you crazy. Now, some people mount them upside down and I've done that before. These little casters, glasses on. Where are my glasses? Couldn't see them. What have we got here? Dave, for the dust collection, why not a cyclone and vent outside like your other one? Uh, yes, it is my first CNC dense. Uh, his first dusty parts flying everywhere, just kidding. Uh, Nick Gibbons agreed, John, that's the way I went in the end. Nothing like a shiny new toy. Exactly right. Now, the question regarding uh, venting outside. I vent outside with the main system here. This one, I'm going to try it with the cartridge filter on. I think I'll get very good collection. And the part, the build, part of the building where the dusty is going, I really don't want to send the, air, the dust laden air out that side. I don't want to put any holes in that part of the wall. Out, out from behind here it was fine. It's pointing away from me down in the valley. There's no one there. But the other side is where the rest of the property is and where the house is. So I'm going to leave it like this for the moment. Now we'll open up this bag. Get a knife. There are these little things, and I think I've got one here somewhere. I'll show you, I'll see if I can find it. I should have really got this part out earlier, but that's okay. Not there. Not there. Not there either. I'm having to look through all of these drawers, and no, it's not there. It'll be in here somewhere. Basically, it's a, uh, it's a magnetic tray. So you throw all the nuts and bolts into the tray and it holds onto them for you so you don't lose them. They don't go rolling. So the only problem with this top is that uh, it's, it's just a little bit hard to see steel screws. Now I've got the long ones. I'm pulling out one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I've separated all of the long screws away from the shorter screws. And the shorter screws are the ones we're going to use on the casters. All right, now I need a washer on, 
on it and it's a Phillips head drive. I'll flip that uh, under there. I'm working on the underside, you can see that. I'll bring that up to there. And then I'll put a caster on there and a nut. I'm not gonna put a washer on this side. And I think these are an eight millimeter. I'll get a screwdriver. So I'll use the drill or even an ordinary screwdriver. Now what I'm going to do while I'm doing this is I'm going to keep looking up at what's happening on the stream so I can keep in tune with what everyone's gossiping about. Mm. Beautiful. Because this, this can be boring. You're probably going to say, look, I could mow the lawn. I could mow the lawn for you and you could watch that. Or I could just put a camera outside and you can watch my grass grow. <laughs> i get this one wheel on and tighten it up. And then that should give you enough indication of what's happening. Like, the thing is, you have to do all these four first before you move on to the next stage. Because the whole thing sits up on top of this base. And you can see it. I will have a look at what size. Are they an eight? They are indeed an eight. Now, that's going to go tight. I can. I love these spanners. These are a little ratchet drive spanner. I love them. I don't know if you've seen these before, but they are fantastic. The ratchet drive. hear it and you can bend them sideways like a socket so I'll nip those up one two remember we've got the giveaway that I'm going to announce the winner three Yeah, so I'm, I haven't got a problem with uh, the caster rotating. I haven't got a problem with um, mentioning other companies. It's, <laughs> that's just silly. That is silly, as though, as though none of you know that there's any other companies around. Of course you do. You know, we're not idiots. Anyway, I'd rather be totally honest about it all, as I try to be, um, and transparent. I had one person make a comment. If it was any more, if it was any more transparent, you wouldn't see me. Get this one on. That's the problem with doing it while. Ah, come on, get underneath it with a screwdriver. Makes it a whole lot easier. There we go. That is easy. I'm going to do some reading. Uh, even grinder stump. Nick Gibbons, I've made a, have a mate with a bobby mower. He can view it on his phone. That be a show, yeah. What are these dust extractors worth? Um, under two hundred dollars. These ones. Um, okay, robot mower. I've seen that one. How about some more likes, guys? Interesting that Carbotech machines appear to be Cantex machines in Canada, sold by Busy B. Dave, you only hit the like button once. Correct. <laughs> if you hit it twice, it'll yeah, uh, Captain Transparent, thank you for that. Yeah, don't hit it twice because that gets rid of it. <laughs> um, look, these are, these are made in China and I'm sure that uh, a similar machine, I don't know if it's the same or, or not, is made by other companies. Yep. I that part doesn't really worry me just as long as the machine I get is within my budget 
and obviously this one is in my budget because it, uh, it was given to me. But before, before I became a megastar, <laughs> I bought everything, Ab absolutely everything in this workshop, I bought. So it wasn't any favours. And then every now and then, people will say, Dave, would you like to use our stuff? Like that, the CNC. I couldn't believe it when that happened. And I said to him, you know, it was actually the software company approached me. They said, Dave, would you like our software? Um, and I said, well, yeah, but I haven't got a machine. What am I going to do with the software? And so then from there on, it's all history. Now, what, I, what you can do while I'm doing this is you could actually be talking to each other and helping each other out as well during this forum. Look, there's another 15 minutes of this. And of course, the giveaway. Don't forget the giveaway. <laughs> OK, we're nearly halfway there. People ask me at work, they say, now, Dave, how long is this machine going to take me to assemble? And I say, well, my table saw took me three cups of coffee. Because that's how I relate it, you know. It's, I've got no idea how much time it actually took, in actual time. But I do know that uh, how many cups of coffee I consume doing it. And then I don't get to sleep at night. It's very important to get all these done and tightened. Okay, that's two wheels. I'll have a bit of a read and some coffee. Talking about coffee. This is probably a one cup of coffee machine. John, you're here to the end. Um, Dave, they're all made in China. My Laguna Three Horse is made in China. They, look, China or Taiwan seems to be the way that most things happen these days. And if they were made elsewhere, you wouldn't buy them because you couldn't afford them. You know, unless, of course, you had an industry where you needed things to run 24 hours a day, and then it'd have to be a three-phase machine. And you'd probably jump up into things costing four to five times the price. Now, for the average guy who is my viewer and subscriber, they're, they're a guy that's got a garage workshop similar to me. And honestly, they haven't got the money to do that. You know, some people just live in a fantasy world that if they, you know, they... they Oh, you know, it's not a felder or it's not such and such. Well, if you can afford a felder, more power to you. That's great. But the average Joe, this is the thing that they're going to buy. And they serve well for the person that's doing it. It'll last them their life. You know, because they're not getting the same amount of uh, use as someone who's in industry. You know, it's a, I think it's a funny thing sometimes when people, say, people make comment. Oh, it's made in China. Well, good. Just about everything is these days. That's just the way that it is. Now, you'll notice that all my casters rotate. See that? And this one. Because I separated the long bolts out to start. What's happening here? Uh, you'll never get it finished in 15 minutes. <laughs> Getting the cast iron wings on my saw stop took me ages. Now, there's a trick to doing the, the wings on the saw stop. And I can tell you if you want. What I do is I turn one of the wings that I'm about to do, I turn it sideways. And I hold it with my hand here so it's upright. And the holes are there. The so it's, let's say, let's, let's just for instance say this is the wing on my cast iron tabletop. And there's the saw that I've got to put it onto. It's got to end up there. Okay, you with me? Now, I will go for the center hole or the one that might have three holes, it might have four holes. I'm not sure on, the, on that one. If it's got four holes, I'll go for the second hole down and I will put a bolt through there and then I will come down to it like so and I'll tighten it up like that. And it makes it so easy. Then I pivot it on that point so it's already held, and then I've got another bolt ready, and so I can work it from underneath. And there you go. That's going to lock it on. Now, regarding height up and down, 
I clamp a piece of timber, a straight edge piece of timber, right across either side onto the saw. And then I pull the wing up till it hits it, and I put a clamp on there as well. And that holds it perfectly flat. Do that either side, tighten the outside ones up, and then you may have a dip in the wing. Cast iron is malleable, it will move. So then I push up from underneath, either with a wooden mallet and give it a tap, or I put a piece of timber underneath down onto the floor and the timber is actually slightly longer than what I want it to be. So I lean the timber out at an angle and then I tap the timber on the floor coming in. So it's doing this. And it slowly pushes the center up, then I nip them. So, and then I can get it dead flat and there's no step there. It's beautiful and locked. Make sure the front is in line with the front, the back is in line with the back. And also one of the things you've got to watch out for is there's normally a chamfer on the edge of the wing facing to the front of the saw. So have a look at that first. The front of the saw normally has a chamfer, mine does. And make sure that the wing, if it has a chamfer on it, also is there, because it looks a bit strange if it's ass about, pardon the French. Okay, and then you put your, your rails on. But that's a, that's a whole other story. So there you go, Nick. You should have asked me before, he said, Dave, is there a way of doing this where it's really easy? And the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, dense, except for my CNC, if that's Axiom USA. Uh, our carpet tech are about to start selling Axiom. I've this, got a little training course this week. So if you're interested in an Axiom, uh, drop in and uh, they're doing free training and showing you how to do it all uh, using the same software that I'm using, Aspire. So that's on Tuesday. I'll be getting a heads up on Monday and you know, I'll get a little bit of training ahead of everyone else. And then on Tuesday, they're doing the software. So that, uh, that could be interesting if you want to drop in. I think it starts around 9.30 or 10 o'clock, something like that. Tighten, tighten, tighten. I've only got one more bolt on this one to go and then a wheel. And then one more wheel. Where are we up to? Uh, same machine on sale $2.99. Wish I knew the secret of the saw stop. I just use clamps. It's easy. It's easy. Uh, what's the next one? I knew this would happen. I tightened that one up before that last rotten bolt went in. <sighs> ah, you idiot, David. Let's tighten it up from underneath. That should work. There she is. And the nut. All right. Okay. Dave, was the choice of size recommended on the, or educated guess, Wayne? It was an educated guess for this one. Definitely. Um, because when I spoke to Nathan at uh, CNC Router Parts, he said a one horse will do it fine. He said, you don't need a two horse. The first cuts I did yesterday with it, oh, it was unbelievable. I did a massive cut. Like the, it was called the spoil board. So I cut a pattern out on the spoil board. I'm going to do another one because I didn't quite like this pattern. But anyway, it was fun watching it. And uh, didn't the machine punch through it quick? I couldn't believe it. Anyway, the, um, the dust, there was 12 litres of dust. Because my little dust extractor is a three and a half litre dust extractor. And I didn't use the cyclone. I thought I'll see how much comes up. So I vacuumed everything after it's finished and I emptied that bag three times and it was nearly full again on the fourth. So that's just from one run. So I need a dust extractor in there big time. Okay, so the last one, the last wheel. See, this isn't too bad. You guys are asking me questions as I'm going along and I can actually get some stuff done, uh, which needs to be done because I'm just running out of time. And that's, I gotta, I gotta let you know, you know, I got a new patron this morning and I thought, oh, what a thing to wake up to. It was so nice. Uh, the fact that someone said, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Dave. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a bit of support. And uh, just put a smile on my face. You know, a lot of things put a smile on my face, but that's, that, it really is nice. You know, someone I, I don't know, a total stranger, says, Dave, here you go. I'll help you out. And I've got to thank John Parra. John is the one who put me onto it. He's kept on insisting and insisting. And I thought, oh, it's just one more thing I've got to do. And, uh, you know, I haven't got a lot of patrons, but uh, in comparison to the guys in the States, but I'm, I'm happy, I'm over the moon. It really does help. Yeah. 
the electricity bill will be coming in soon and uh, I'll be able to square that away without too much trouble. What do we got next? I wish they would show the axiom in Canberra. Will you film it? Um, I don't know, John. Oh, that's too small. I can't use that bolt. I've got to use this one. There's two little ones in there as well. Uh, I think... I think they have... I don't know if they want me to film it or not, but I th probably not. I think they have some stuff on their website. If you go to Axiom website, you should be able to see everything there. They're all ball screws, all the uh, X, Y, and Z axis. Oh, and I'm starting to know what everything means now as well. Before, you know, you took me back six months ago, and you asked me to tell you what the X axis is on a CNC machine, or even in the software, I would have looked at you like you're an alien. <laughs> what weird talk is this that you're coming at with me with? So, <clears throat> just roughly, for people that don't want to know, I'm going to tell you anyway. When you're looking at a sheet of paper, like so, across is the X, up and down is the Y, and then the depth coming down to it. So if I turn the paper this way, that way is called Z. Now, when you're looking at a monitor on a, on a computer, the X axis is this way. The Y axis is up and down. So when you're looking at, the, at that, and then the Z axis, you have to actually tell it the depth. You don't see that unless you go into a 3D and start rolling the thing around. So on the machine, when I'm standing in front of the machine, say this is my CNC machine here. It has two rails that go down that way that the gantry runs along. You know, like in shipyards, they've got these big gantry things and they've got a crane that hangs down. So that's, this is a perfect example of a CNC machine. Left and right, these things are called lineal rails and that's what the gantry travels along on lineal bearings. So <laughs> this is totally impromptu. I'm sorry, guys, if you weren't interested. But it, it really did help me when I realized all of this and I, I try and visualize it's the same with a computer. I look at computers and how to save files like buildings, rooms, filing cabinets, files and documents. So I would look at a computer on a network as being the network is this little city of different buildings. In each building, let's say the computer I'm running on at the moment is one of my buildings. In there are different drives. There's a C drive, a D, and a, sorry, a C and an F and a G. I've got different ones in there. So they, they are the different rooms in that building, the different drives. Now, in the drives are um, folders. So those folders I classify as being filing cabinets. So I've got all these cabinets in there. And so in those folders, I can have, in those cabinets, I can have individual manila folders and I can bring out and I can say, all right, well, I've got documents. Um, no, documents, I've gone too far. There's, there's secondary folders in there. And, you know, then we get to documents or pictures like photographs. I try and visualize it in something that my old brain and my old way of thinking can, can comprehend. And I'm doing the same with the CNC machine. So I try to demystify, de-scare myself about the thing. <clears throat> Sorry. Coming up to the prize. <clears throat> Uh, so, as I say, with the CNC machine, x-axis, the x-axis is the, the router actually traveling left and right across the job. The y-axis is down the job, so down the sheet or the piece of plywood or whatever I'm going to be cutting with the router. And the z-axis is up and down, so that's how deep the router is going to be plunging at that point. It's really, really very easy. And I'll go through it all in the video. Now, look, we've had enough dust extraction assembly at the moment. I've got all the base done. How nice is that? You'll love it, of course. Let's jump over here and we'll read out the winner. I'm going to finish building this extractor later on today. Uh, switch cameras to uh, camera one. I've moved it, haven't I? I'm going to have to... Swing it back over here. Uh, where am I? Uh, yeah, I could build you a Stanton bench on the CNC. Of course I can. Give me time. I need to get my head around everything, and then I'll start doing it. So if anyone's interested, yep, 
Okay, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Uh, all of this back here. Let's read a couple of the entries to start for everyone who's still here. Yes, correct. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, Dev Scott, you didn't win. Sorry. Uh, table saw stock guides and a few others. Steve Ho, I would like the clear cut stock guides for both table saw and the router table. Uh, Derek Lark wants the whole damn shooting match. Unlucky. <laughs> router table, it is for me. So, look, you guys, if. If you haven't won the stuff today, obviously you can go and find the people who are the distributors for whatever country you're in and you can get the stuff. It's really, really nice stuff. And Jessam, a beautiful brand. I love their stuff. Uh, Skip, uh, Balish, I'm trying to build up my shop. These would help me a lot. Uh, had a stroke and need guides. Sean Leesk, uh, the stock guides already have the Jessam router table. Well, that's brilliant. Bob McIntyre, great stuff. Bob, you didn't win again. Off in your camping van and off you go for another round of Australia. Cass White, Jessam make great products. We would like any of their products. Um, Dean K, product, more like product, products, plural. I want them all. Uh, Don Bullock, router lift. Stuart Reedy, these would be great for like an extra pair of hands. Look, there are so many entries. This is great. But the winner, and you know who it was? And this is, this is written down. Before I even came to the show, John Lowry, you are it, buddy. You won it. So uh, I will need to, you to send me an email to Dave Stanton fans, and I will need your address and your phone number. And I will forward those on to Jessam because you need the phone number because Jessam has to let the courier know the phone number to contact you so that they make sure that you're home. So there you go. Did you enjoy the show, guys? Oh, thanks, Tim. That's great that you uh, subscribed. Dave, you didn't finish. No, I did not <laughs> finish. Uh, Kevin, Dave is a woodworker, I think, of a computer hard drives and the data that's stored on it as a tree, branches, limbs, and leaves on the branches. That's a great idea. Dens uh, was just in Fort Worth area. Way to go, John. Yep, yeah, good on you, John. That's fantastic. And look, thanks, everyone, for watching. I shall see you next week. And here comes the outtake. See you later.